Hi and welcome to Sew a Softy in July. Sew a Softy in July is a month of free online tutorials to inspire you to sew with your kids. I'm starting off, I'm Trixie Simons and, I have the, and I'm doing the first tutorial for Sew a Softy in July which is this little fellow called Square Cat. Now if you want to get the template for Square Cat you just go over to my blog sewasofty.com where you'll find the template these supplies and step-by-step -step instructions in case um, you forget what's happening in the video. So first things first. This is the template. You'll need to download, you'll cut out the template, um, the paper template and then you'll get your felt and you'll cut out all your pieces which I have here from felt and you're almost ready to begin. So what are you going to need? You're going to need some thread. Now I use ordinary sewing cotton. I like it because it's thin because you can thread it um, and double it over which means the needle doesn't fall off the thread. And another reason I like the sewing cotton is because you can use these really um, very fine thin needles um, which make it really easy for kids to pull the needle through the thread. Now these are chenille number 24. So these are the ones I use when I'm using my ordinary sewing cotton. If you're using something a bit thicker like a embroidery thread then you'll in most cases need a slightly bigger needle with a bigger eye so you can thread it through. Okay I think we're ready to begin. Oh actually you'll need some pins and some stuffing. So let's begin. Okay, now the first thing you're going to take is your square of felt, but I'm just going to turn it around this way so I can see. Um, I've cut out these um, little pupils, now, but they'd be very hard to cut out by hand. But what I use is something called a hollow punch. A hollow punch works really, really well to cut out little circles. Some of the hollow punches, or replaceable hollow punches as they're called, have little um, different sized circles that you just screw on and off. And some of them are just um, individual bits like this. Now, you have to actually bang them so you'd get the whatever size you want. You'd put it on your felt and it needs to be hammered away. I usually get my husband to do that because he's a little bit stronger than me and he makes a nice circle. So that's how I use, um, get these nice little circles. You don't need to use them, you could cut out a little shape, you could use a French knot, a um, little cross stitch, whatever you want. Okay, so now, um, before I start, because I'm going to be, let's show you, because I'm going to be embroidering the nose on, I'm going to put my nose and eyes, position them before I sew the front part of square cut to the back. So let's begin. I've got some glue. Um, just remember, all glues aren't the same. Not all of them work with um, felt, so you're going to have to experiment. Now I'm just going to put the back of square cut here and I'm going to place the front there. That way I can just see when I'm positioning him, his eyes and his nose that they're sort of more or less in the place I want them. So, whoops, the daisy you nose know, gets in the way. So, you can think, oh, I like the no eyes closer. You might want the eyes further away. It's fun just to experiment. I'm deciding to put my eyes a little bit closer. And I like that. So now, I'm just going to remove the bottom set of the glue. I'm just going to get the glue. This is a very thick, tacky glue. It usually works, um, usually works with felt, but like I said, always experiment before, because some glues don't stick, and you sort of think you're stuck on it, and it just peels off. Okay, I've got a little bit of glue. I sometimes just put a smaller bit of glue on, press it down. Don't use too much glue because it sometimes uh, leaks through to the other side and you can see it. So I tend to use sometimes probably a little bit too little glue, but I always think I can always add. So I've got the glue 
more or less cover it, don't want it too much. And I want it about there, yep. And I'm going to do the other one. I find a little skew is an easy way for me to put the glue on without putting too much glue on and without it dripping everywhere. Okay. Mm, looks even. Squish it down. Okay, now I'm going to put the nose on. Mm. I'm using different sorts of felts. There's different sorts of felt you can use. Um, they're, they're thicker and thinner. Um, the front part here I'm using is a wool blend felt and I'm actually using a thicker felt at the back. This is actually a wool felt but you just find a felt that um, works for you and is locally available. Now I'm going to do this little mouth. If you don't want to, I'm sewing the mouth on with three little stitches. If you don't want to um, sew the mouth on you could draw it on or put a little bit of felt on but I'm going to just show you how I've embroidered on. So I have my embroidery thread here um, because it's thicker I've got a slightly bigger needle and I'm not going to double it over because I don't want to make it too thick. So I've got, I'm going to just tie a little knot in the end, wrap the thread around my finger, sort of hold, oh, I'll show you that again, hold where there's that little X, just hold the little X part and take the tail and under through the loop and there's your knot. Okay so I'm just going to start from the back. I want the thread to come up right in the middle of the nose because I'm going to do this part of the um, little mouth first. So I hope you can see this. I'm sort of coming up. I'm just going to check. I just go over a little bit. Looks about right. So I'm going to have to turn this around. So I'm going to think, oh, how long do I want the little mouth bit about there? And then I'm got, going to use, want to sort of poke, I'm going to do the second stitch here now. So I'm just going to go down. Let me just check get what I've done. Yep. <laughs> just going to go down a little bit like that. Okay, I'm going to put the needle back down there. Oops, a daisy. That's my glue. Get rid of that. Okay, there's one. And now I'm going to go, I want to the mouth to be about the same distance. I'm sort of going to measure it with my eye a little bit, sort of over there. Come up. Through, back through that same sort of place where all the stitches meet and there's my little mouth. Now one of the ends is a bit longer than the other. I think that's quite cute but if you didn't like it you can pull your thread out and do that stitch again. I'm just going to turn it over and I'm going to show you how to end the thread. I'm just going to, going to pull the needle through any of those stitches. You have the loop, put the needle through the loop and tie. Now that's a pretty secure knot but if you're not quite sure you can just do exactly the same thing again. Put the needle under that thread through the loop and oops a daisy. There we go. So there we go. The face is done. Now I'm going to take back of square cat and I'm very carefully going to place the front of square cat evenly on the back. Okay so and now I'm going to use some pins to pin the front to the back. Some people prefer using sewing clips which they'll just use like that. Whoops, no, holding the two ends together, but I just like using pins, so that's what I'm going to use. Okay, have I remembered everything? Okay, good. so here's my thread. 
This is my um, ordinary sewing thread. I need quite a long bit, so what I often do is I just get the kids to hold the thread in one hand and then I get them to pull, you might not see this arm, right out and go right over to their other arm. It's about 30 centimetres, sorry, 80 centimetres. And you've got quite a long bit of thread, but it's always good just to judge with your kids. Sometimes kids need a bit of longer thread, a shorter thread. You don't want to make the thread too short because you're going to have to be changing it all the time. So here's my needle. Okay, and I'm just going to thread it now. I take the end of the thread and I'm going to just, I don't know if you can see, I just want a tiny, tiny little bit of thread poking through my fingers and push it through the eye. There's lots of, you can use a needle threader or you can use the paper trick, which is I have a video for of showing you different ways to thread a needle. So now I'm going to bring the two ends of my thread together when I can find them. I've lost one of my ends. Oh, there it is. So here we go. Two ends of my threads together. And I'm going to tie it in a knot like I did the thing, um, other thread, just wrap it around my finger. Got that little sort of X, slip the loop off your finger, tail under, and yep, I didn't do a very good job of that. Oh, no, I did actually, and there's your knot. I'm going to just cut that tail because it's a bit long, we don't need it that long, so cut the tail off. You still have your knot there. So now we're going to sew around the square cat. Because we've got two layers, we want to make sure they sit nice and securely, I'm going to start with a double stitch. I'm going to start from between the two layers of felt and I do that so that I hide the knot between the two layers. When you're working with, okay that didn't work, I'm just going to do that knot again because I didn't do a good job. Okay, do that again, wrap it around my finger, slip the knot off and Ah, now that looks like a better knot. And again, I'm just going to cut the tail end off because you don't need it so long. Okay, take two. Here we go. So I'm th putting the thread between the net two layers to hide the knot. If you're working with kids, you can actually draw a line around the cat so they can see where they're going. Now, to start off, I'm just going to do a back stitch. I'm going backwards and I'm going to go more or less into the stitch where I began and I'm going to do another stitch in exactly the same place. So back and forward and I'm just going to go a little forward so you've got a little space. And I do that to make a very secure knot when you start and end your stitching. Okay, so now we're ready to begin. We're just going to do a simple running stitch which is just down and up. Some people um, or some kids uh, go to the back and then forward, but I find that it's usually easier for kids if they just go down and up and they know where to go. Sometimes if you want, you can have the um, kids put their needle, um, their work on the table, and I tell them as soon as they feel the needle touch the table, they flick it up. Sometimes kids like to hold it doesn't matter which way your kids like to sew as long as they're, it's something the way they like to do it but I usually find going oops, down and up really good. Sometimes the thread just curls and knots which usually just means you've got to give it a little tug, straighten the thread out and you're ready to begin again. And it's always down and up. down and up. As you pass by your needle, if it gets in the way, you can just take your sew pin out, you can just take your pin out, keep sewing. When your kids get the hang of sewing, or at least get the hang of the running stitch, you can actually get them to do two stitches, so you go down, up, down, up like that, and it means it just goes a little bit quicker and they get to finish their project earlier. One of the reasons I like the running stitch is it's a pretty easy stitch to master and it means kids can finish their work 
fairly easy, fairly, fairly quickly, which is really important when you're working with kids. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. You don't want a project that takes too long. I always tell the kids when they get to about this much thread to stop, because that's when they need to stop this thread, to end the thread and start the new thread. Sometimes, depending on your project and the length of your thread, you don't need to change the thread halfway. But if you do, you're going to do exactly the same double stitch as you did at the beginning. So I'm just going to show you. I'm just going to pretend my thread is ready to stop. <coughs> so you're going to go do your forward stitch. Now you're going to go backwards and forwards. And you're going to do another stitch on top of that. And to end your thread, I'm just going to pause a little bit of a curl there. Now to end your thread, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to put the ne through the, the needle between the two layers. So just through that little point there. Oops. The needle goes through the two layers. And I'm going to cut that. And now you're ready to begin sewing again until you get to this point here when you're going to have to stop because that's when we do our stuffing. So I'll just show you once more how to thread your needle. Um, don't forget, if you know how to thread your needle, you can just fast forward this video and go to the place you need to go. Of course, now I've lost the end of my thread. There it is. Okay, I'm going to pull it, a nice long bit of thread. Okay, just a teeny bit of thread, poke it through the eye of the needle, bring your two ends together. If you have any questions, you can pop over to the Sew Softy Facebook group. There's always someone in the group to help you, or you can pop over to my blog. There's lots of tips and tricks to sewing with kids, or just leave a comment below and let me know what your question is. And there we go, there's our knot. I'm just going to get rid of the tail bit. And we're going to start again with a double stitch. So between the two layers of felt, hides the tail, I'm going to go backwards and forwards. To my back stitch, I'm going to do another stitch on my back. Um, backwards and then I'm just going to go a little bit forwards and yep just pull it again there we go and I'm going to keep on sewing until I get to there Okay, now you've got this little space here, which is going to use for stuffing. So I'm going to take my pin out and I've got some stuffing here. So just take little bits of stuffing. I'm, I'm leaving my thread because um, I've got plenty of thread left to close the gap. Just make sure it doesn't get lost when you do your inside when you do your stuffing. So I'm just going to stuff. If you want to get the stuffing to the corners you can just use a pencil 
and push it to the corners because that's where you want to get first or you might just prefer kids might prefer using their fingers kids love to overstuff their stuffies their um, softies so you might have to watch that I've often um, in my classes had to do emergency surgery when a poor softy burst at the seams so here we go little bits of stuffing push it to the ends Okay. This little filler. No, perhaps he's got a bit too much. All that eye's coming off, so I didn't use enough glue, so I'm going to have to fix that. I think maybe he's got a bit too much stuffing in him, so I'm going to take something out, see how that works. Okay, I think that's good. He still might be a bit too much stuffed. We'll see how we go. I think that's good. So I'm just going to push all the stuffing in and I'm going to put a pin right here to hold the stuffing back so that we can easily sew our little gap closed. So I've got my needle which I've left. Oops, a daisy. Oops, it got caught. I'm going to take that pin out of the way because I don't need it anymore. It makes it easier to sew. So I've just got a couple more stitches. Okay, now this is my last stitch and I'm going to do my double stitch again. So it's backwards. And another stitch on top of that. And I'm going to just take the needle through the two layers I felt to hide it and cut it. Oh and guess what I forgot to do? I forgot to sew the tail on the back. That's okay. So what I should have done after I did the face was take the back bit and sew the tail on. But that's okay. If you've done what I did I will show you what to do. Normally you would do it after you've sewn the face on, which you'll see if you go to my blog in the instructions, I'm just going to put a bit more glue here. If you go to my blog, you'll see in the instructions, the tail gets sewn on first. So, we forgot to do the tail. So what can we do? We can do two things. We can glue the tail on, or we can see if we can sew it on. So, I've got some, just going to get some more thread. I'm going to show you with the darker thread again. It won't need such a long piece of thread this time. Thread that. Double the ends. Tie in a knot. Lift the loop. Oops, there is the under. Okay, I'm going to do that again. Over, didn't follow my instructions, just hold the little knot X, thread under. There's our knot, I'm just going to get rid of the tail. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start over here, away from the tail, about an inch, and I'm going to bring the needle up into the tail and Usually, if you give it a little bit of a tug, let's see if this works. Ah, the knot gets lost in this in the um, in the fluff, and then I'm just going to do a little running stitch. You could do an over stitch, a back stitch, a cross stitch. I'm just doing another running stitch. I've got two little running stitches to hold the tail on, and then I'm going to take the end of the thread out here. And I'm going to tie my knot by wrapping the thread around the needle. Yep. And yep, that does what I'm going to go, and I'm just going to go backwards. That didn't really work. Sometimes it just does. I'm just going to go back, over, do another stitch. Go to the thing. 
and that's just like doing a back stitch so I'm just going to do a double stitch and just push my thread through pull it tightly and snip it and the thread gets lost so that wasn't the best way to do it but it's not too bad if you have a better idea you can let me know okay so there we go now what we need to do next is just cut out little these brown triangle things these little um, cat markings glue on the inner ear and all these little paws and the little bits from the tail and your little square cat is ready so I'll just glue them on quickly if you want to see I'll just glue on the ears again I'm just using my tacky glue I'm just going to put it a bit there where's my other inner ear check I've got them both even okay there we go and um, I won't show you how to glue on but the, you just glue on the little paws in the same way any markings you want let your kids decide they might decide they don't want any markings so don't forget if you want the template and step-by-step -step photo instructions you can pop over to sewwithsofty.com don't forget if you sew any softies this month, um, this is July, pop over to my Instagram account and um, you can have a look what everybody's doing and you can post your own softies with the hashtag sewasoftie. Happy sewasoftie month.